Hello. Today I thought we'd have a little bit of fun with our leftovers pantry. We've, you've seen my leftovers pantry before. I've got so, some drawers here that I've marked and I can pop different sizes in. So today we're going to make a floating four patch block using some of our leftovers. In particular we're going to be using some two and a half inch squares and some five inch squares that we're going to cut in half. And of course there's other ways of doing this block and other sizes and things, um, but this is what we're going to do today. So in my two and a half inch um, draw here, I have actually already pre-sorted some squares, but I've got some two and a half inch squares ready, and I need four because I'm going to make the four patch in the middle here. So I'm sure you all know how to make a four patch, but we'll quickly run through and do the four patch. I mean, you, so this is a, a slightly disorganized quilt in that I'm not matching all my fabrics. There's other ways of making the quilt. But this is the way I'm doing it today. So I'm just going to chain piece those through. And then I'm going to quickly press those seams because we want everything to sit nice and flat. So I'm spring the line across. And I'm just, it doesn't particularly matter which way you press them, but they do need to be going in opposite directions for when you join the next seam up. So if you've got a, a way that you're trying to position them, um, perhaps you've got slightly darker squares or something like that, but as long as they end up being opposite. So now I'm going to join those two that way because my seams are now going in opposite directions. And that's so that we can butt them together or nestle them together nicely. Um, for the next seam. So now I'm going to go back to the machine and uh, join up that four patch. Four patches don't take very long to make, which is a really good thing. Not that everything has to be done in a rush. Now as well as being good for, for using up leftovers, this is a really good quilt to perhaps make if you've got a group of people that want to make a quilt. Uh, maybe in a club or just a smaller group of you that are all trying to participate in the one quilt. I'm just going to quickly press this seam over. Um, because as you'll see later when we um, are nearer to finishing the block, we're going to be trimming the block down. Um, so because what you find when you make group quilts is that like our handwriting, all our seam allowances just vary a little bit. So sometimes blocks can come out different sizes when you've got different people at making the same block for the same quilt and sometimes that can cause a few little problems if the blocks are a different size um, but shortly you'll see how we can um, take away any of the worry of that so now I'm going to get my five inch squares from my little five inch drawer from my little leftovers pantry here and I'm going to use four different ones um, as I've used in this block here these are similar colors but four different fabrics, because I'm using leftovers, you could make them all matching, so you would just need two five inch squares of the same fabric. But because I'm using the leftovers or odd ones, I'm going to do it this way. So out of four five inch squares, you'll actually get two surrounds for two blocks. So today we're just going to make the one block, but I'll have enough triangles left to make another block with the same sort of surrounds. Or you could just if you've got lots of similar coloured fabrics, you could just cut them and just randomly use them around. So I'm just going to cut this in half diagonally, just right through the points. And now what I've got is these triangles. I'm not going to need those four because they're for another block. So here's my four patch and here's my triangle. So these are going to just sit around. So what we're going to do is pop them on opposite sides first. So there's no hardship with lining these up because I'm going to flip that over and where the point sits, it should sit, if you can see this, it should line up with the center seam of your four patch. So it's not hard to position it. You could if you wanted to do a little finger press there to line up at that seam, but it's not really necessary because if you're lining up that straight edge there and pop your point on the seam there, it's going to be sitting in the right place for you. And then you can flip it over and we're going to just sew that seam there. So just using quarter of an inch seam allowance all the time. This is 
makes such a delicious quilt using those delicious leftovers. Um, and as I said, when you've got, if you've got different people working on it, it works fine. So now I'm going to sew the opposite side on before I take it, that to the iron to press. And the same thing, so just flip this one out of the way, lay your next triangle along the opposite edge, line up your point with the seam, and same thing, flip that over and take that to the machine and do that seam. So I didn't want to press it um, until I'd done both of these and I'll show you why in a minute. But you could, uh, with these surrounding triangles, you could alternate lights and darks or if you've got specific colours you like, you could have blues and reds. This would work in all sorts of different fabrics. You could have brights, you could have um, maybe some reproduction fabrics that you're trying to use up. Anyway, so I've sewn my two triangles on here. So lay them nice and flat, flip that over, and now we're just going to trim these points off at this stage before we do any pressing. So just line that up with the edge of your four patch, and you can just run through and trim those two points off. And the same on this side. Those you don't need now. Oops, those you do. So now I'm going to bring the iron across and we're just going to press these two, press them out towards the triangle. But in order to get that to sit nicely, I'm going to lay, lay one down. Oops, oops. And I'm going to pop the iron on that one whilst pressing that one over. Now don't stretch anything. You must remember at this stage that this little seam is on the bias, so even when you're sewing it, just be careful that you're not stretching it at all. But this should all just sit in quite nicely for you. So I'll flip the other one over now. So now we've got this nice elongated shape. We're going to pop the other triangles on the other two edges of your four patch now. And so just the same thing, we're going to be lining up that point um, with the centre seam of your four patch and your edge with your now longer edge. So you should have just enough sitting out at each end for your seam allowance. That should all fit quite nicely. Don't panic if it's just slightly out because that's where it's going to be trimmed away and you won't notice any difference. But your point should line up in the center so that everything's sitting fairly central. So this is a no stress block. So that's one side on, and the same as before, I'm going to now pop the other side on, flip that one out of your way, lay that one on, again, line your point up, line your edge up, everything should be sitting quite nicely there, back to the machine. Same thing, lay, leave one laying flat while you press open the opposite seam there. Turn it around, open that one out, and there you've got a nicely pressed block, which at the moment is going to have a funny measurement because we're actually going to trim that block down, and that's where. It doesn't really matter too much if our seam allowances are slightly out because it's slightly oversized and we can trim it down. We've got a little bit of room to move on, on that. So I've got a square ruler here which conveniently has um, a seven inch line on it. We're going to be trimming the block down to, to measure seven inches. It's probably somewhere around, let's have a look, seven and a half-ish at the moment. Um, but I think just to make sure everything's sitting nice and straight, we'll trim to seven. So to do that, I'm going to position it. So you want it to be nicely centered. So halfway through, because we're going to trim it to seven inches, halfway through is going to be three and a half inches. So you want to line up 
your three and a half inches with the points of your four patch. So I'm not sure if you can see this well on the video or not, but I've got my diagonal line on the ruler and that's going straight through this central line of the four patch here. And I've got my three and a half inch mark here and I want that to be right in the center of that four patch so that everything sits nice and central. And so then I'm going to make sure that my three and a half runs up through the points and it's doing a pretty good job on that of the four patch. So I'm just going to hold that down and I, you can see I've just got some little rough edges here. I'm just going to trim those off. Oops, I'm going to slip around. Just do two sides and then turn the block around so that it's facing you. And this time we're going to line up with this, um, sorry, this seven inch line. So if you've got a ruler that doesn't have a specifically strong line at seven inch, you may want to pop a little bit of masking tape or that clear colored tape on it to help with that positioning if you're not too sure about just doing it with the line that's there. But because I can see now clearly that that's lined up along my seven inch, I've got a similar amount to trim off the other two sides as I trimmed previously, which is another indicator. If you've got a way different size, you may want to check that everything is sitting okay. Trim off those bits, we don't need that. So not a lot of waste, and now that measures seven inches. So what you're going to have when you finish the block is a six and a half inch finished block. So if you're trying to work out some calculations, we've used four two and a half inch squares, and we've used either two or four five inch squares cut in half, and we've ended up with a, a measuring seven inch block finishing at six and a half inch when it's sewn in. So I'll just pop these up here on my design board just to show you um, how that's going to look when it's all done. So you can see I've already made a few blocks here with different coloured surrounds. Um, pop that one up there. And I think that's quite fun. So you can organise it a little bit more, like these two are a little bit organised. We've got two blue squares here and two light squares. And here we've got two light squares and two red squares. Um, so you, you could do that and you might want to alternate like I have with those two or you might just be doing randomly piecing or you might be doing a bit of everything. Um, it's really a choice of how you'd like to do it. Um, but I think that's quite a fun block using some leftovers, using it as a group quilt block. And I'm just going to show you another quilt that a friend of mine has made using the same block but a slightly smaller so size. So here I've got a quilt made using this same block, the floating four patch, but it is a slightly smaller quilt uh, block um, but this is made by my friend Janet thank you Janet for the loan of your delicious quilt um, and she has made the block a little bit smaller um, it was some time ago in the sewing group that I'm part of we were all making this block but I don't have a quilt but uh, the other girls all have got their quilts and things and this is so this is Janet's Janet has been a little bit organized with her um, using up her leftovers she's got all four triangles around in her square the same and she's done two and two with her four patches but nonetheless she's used fairly random fabrics again using up leftovers so I just thought that was a really good example of how you might use the block um, so it could all be the same surround or, or as in my blocks that I've just been showing you I've used similar colours but different fabrics because I was just using up some squares and things. So I just thought that was a really good example to show you how you might put together a floating four patch. There's lots of different ways you could alternate one block being light, one being dark, so that it was almost a checkerboard effect. You could have all similar colours. It's just endless. The possibilities just go on and on forever. So use up some leftovers, use some new fabrics, make some quilts, send me some photos and that was the floating four patch so the instructions i've given you for this block that's up here were two and a half inch squares used in the four patch and half of a five inch square for each of the corners on the surround and you're going to end up with a finished six and a half inch block when it's sewn into your quilt so enjoy the floating four patch thank you